How you doing, folks? My name's Wesley Mann. Uh, this video is brought to you from uh, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors. They're located in Alvin, Texas. Today we're going to go over the Massey Ferguson 2860M hydrostatic with a cab and the FL2814 loader. We also have a third function up front for running implements on the front. And we also added an extra remote in the rear to run a bat wing. But uh, this is our personal farm tractor that we have on our, on our family mini farm up here in Indian Mountain, Tennessee. Uh, it has about 52 hours on it, so I can give you a good detailed overview and show you what this tractor is all about. This uh, video is brought to you from UBC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors. Ah Alright folks, I have the, uh, the bucket and, and the uh, booms up in the air so we can get, it, get the uh, hood raised for you. So what we have is a four wheel drive. This is an Izeki powered 60 horsepower engine married up with an Izeki trans hydrostatic transmission. So what this is a 60.3 horsepower, I believe, or 60.2 horsepower engine. And at the PTO, you have a 44.6 horsepower at the PTO. So back here with all the power taken out from the hydrostatics and by the time it gets down through the gears, you have 44.6 horsepower at the PTO on this model. So that, that, that's enough to turn a 12 foot bat wing, which I'll do follow on videos with that. But these are proven Japanese built engines. Um, they will last a lifetime. So here's your oil filter, your oil fill. Okay. And then we go around this beautiful hood. We have the nice front lights on it. Um, you raise the hood by like an automotive style. You pull it and just lift up. And there you go. You can access it with the hood down. You can also access here's your engine oil dipstick and your battery is all located up here. Your coolant is right here. This is your oil filters, I mean oil coolers, and then you have your radiator. So one thing you want to keep in mind whenever you're using the machine, it's easier to do it with the uh, loader up, but you want to pull these screens out, blow them out, especially in real, real deep grass, not every hour or so. Um, if you're out there bush hogging or doing what you do and that keeps it out of the actual coolers same thing for the uh, for the radiator get a little bit of build up like this one has a little bit but these things will be covered up in the middle of the day if you're working your machine pretty good uh, not so bad in the dirt something else I wanted to cover was your air cleaner so your air cleaner is sitting right here you got one two three latches and you want to be able to take your blower what I do I take a blower with me and set it somewhere out in the field pop that open and you pull out your air cleaner and that's an internal air cleaner but I send that blower I put it through right here and I blow it all throughout and blow out all the dirt uh, I do that one if I'm in real dusty conditions about once every hour I'll stop the machine get that and blow it out and you also want to check this little rubber piece that goes in here so that's a good good thing to check but uh while you're running the machine little tip and trick right there and I'll be doing more tip and trick videos on how to hook up implements, um, what implements do what, and how all that works in the near future. This is my first video doing a tractor, so bear with me if it's a little rough, um, but we're working on it. And that's how you put that in. Again, your engine coolant's right here and your battery's right there. Real easy to run, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and, and that's your DPF, diesel particulate filter, and we'll go over that in just a little bit, but that's where it's located. So this is a four cylinder engine, uh, and your, fuel fill is down here on the side rather than being up top or over the top of that it's down here so you can just dump a bucket straight in a lot of people want to pull this out but don't do that just leave it in and uh, it'll keep all the big stuff out of your fuel tank okay doesn't take much more time at all to fill so again this is the cab model and you enter the cab it's beautiful it's a real nice cab that you can enter so um, and it's and it keeps everything real quiet um, it raises the price considerably, but it is really nice to have. I tell you, it keeps all that dirt and stuff off you, nice and cool in the AC, and you got a radio. So we'll get to the rear of the tractor where all the work's done, okay? These are, your, these are your sway bars. So what they do is keep your implement from hitting your tires. So every implement is going to be a little different. There is a spring that come with here, uh, but I dropped it in the dirt. Something you might want to, you know, pay attention to. Don't be like me. But I use a bungee cord instead um, for right now. They have a nice little toolbox in the back. And here's your windshield wiper fluid, okay? So 
This little toolbox is handy. These go to the back wing, keep extra little pins, extra little clasp in there. Anything that you need is just sitting right here where you're gonna need it anyway. Here's your upper part of the three point and that adjusts your, your angle on the top of the uh, implement. So you hook that up at the top. The bottom on these, whenever I'm hooking up an implement, I will pull these pins and I'll pull both sides, okay? And then I'll just throw one down to that side, one down to that side, because you want to be able to move them, okay? On these Masseys, on the Massey Ferguson's, these adjust out. So if you're real close, you can just push down this lever on these M models, and I believe some of the E models have them. And these also come with a cool Cat, cat 1 or a Cat 2. So what that does, guys, is some implements are, are require a bigger pulling power. They uh, Massey put them into the same ball so you don't have to change them out. So you just rotate them around and there it is. Um, it makes it real nice. Some implements only require a Cat 1, so for the lighter tractors. If you're pulling a big implement uh, that requires more pulling power, you got the Cat 2. And then these collapse back in, okay? And then you get these as tight as possible, either that way or that way. And it keeps your implement from slapping your tire, which I'll cover up hooking up implements in a, uh, in a little while and on other videos, but different implements. Um, here's your drag bar. The angles should be out like this, so it doesn't pinch. There's a flat side on the back side, and then there's an angled side on this side. This is what you want your, your main drag bar to look like. And then go ahead and keep these things relatively tight. And then I'm gonna put those back on. And whenever you're not in use, you use that little spring, or in my case, having to use a bungee cord. And I just hook it around there. Whoop, mess that up. And boop, through that hole. And I come back around. That little spring's a lot nicer than this, but you know what? We're out in the country, we'll be all right. And this is a great addition that I love. You just get a little 9 16 wrench or a ratchet and socket and take off this cover. It covers your PTO shaft whenever you're not using it and it keeps, those, uh, keeps the shaft and the grease clean. This is your cylinder. Um, this, this three point will lift 24 inches out 3086 pounds okay that's this and again you're at 44.6 on the hydrostatic if you're running the shuttle shuttle shift you will run um you'll be running at 47.6 so it takes a little bit more horsepower out of your three point uh, out of your pto but this is also something to check your little glass right here and i'm going to go drop that loader real quick um and show you what that is but I'll come back to it so i got two sets of remotes back here so uh, that comes standard with one, then I bought another one. I think this number two was added to run the bat wing. So one of these operates the wing, one of them operates the lift on the bat wing itself. So that's why I got two remotes on here to run that bat wing. Uh, most people don't need that. Um, it does come with one, but if you're running a, uh, a post hole digger off the back, you can run that. And so you got pretty lights. So you got rear work lights, front work lights, and everything going so on the loader you push forward and it drops okay and I'll show you how to operate that loader here in a minute but with all your cylinders all the way in and the bucket in and your three-point raised or lowered I'm sorry lowered this oil should be right in the middle of that sight glass and that's where it needs to be setting little tip and trick right there and this is where you feel your hydraulic oil okay so if I was to drop this, suck in all cylinders, it should be right in the middle, okay? So that's all you gotta check on that for your hydraulic fluid. So we went over the engine, coolant, and got a bunch of grease certs. You just kind of look around, each tractor's a little different, but there's one here, 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 on the other side, there's another one here. Just go around the tractor and grease it. Grease it every, every time or every other time you take it out. Your steering, you have a grease cert here and here. And underneath here, you got two. Okay, one for here, one for there. And if you grease it, and on your three-point, you got one too. So that's, just take care of these machines and they'll take care of you. That's the goal, so. All right, we're gonna go into the cab now. And remember that third function that I told you, I'm gonna show you that, it's electric. But it goes in right here, and that's where you plug in all your implements for your front controls if you need hydraulics, if you're needing a grapple or something like that. So, all right. So now we're gonna step into the cab 
Okay, I'm gonna wait a minute. These are your brakes, okay? This releases your brakes. This tilts the steering wheel with your foot, so that's a nice addition. This is your differential lock, and different implements are heavier than others. So if you want it to go slower, you screw it in, and if you want it to drop faster, you screw it out. It's a quick on-the-fly adjustment, and then you have an air ride seat in the cab. Makes it real nice. You also got cruise control, which your cruise control is your max speed. So you can go super fast, or you can slow it down if you have like kids in there, max speed, or if you have a young adult in there. And you don't want to go too fast, you set that, okay? How fast this responds, and how fast and how hard you push those pedals, that's what that's for. And then you can also put it on cruise control. Which I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. <laughs> Over here, you have your four-wheel drive engage. These are your three gears for the hydrostatic model, which a turtle, or is turtles in the middle. A snail is really, really slow, but you need some serious pulling power and it's real heavy load. I normally run the bat wing in that mode, um, and I'll run it in four-wheel drive a lot because we have to pull up hills up here in Tennessee. Um, but one-wheel drive, one-wheel drive without it, four-wheel drive with it, and you lock in your differential with this, so you don't want to turn with that locked, okay? You use a straight pull, you get stuck, you need to get out of a spot, you lock in that differential, but you don't want to turn because the gears, the tires will just turn themselves and you'll jump, okay? While you're hooking up your implement, um, this is turns off your PTO, it'll put it in neutral, you put it back and it unlocks, you lock it in 540, 540 is 540 RPMs is what most mowers are set up to run, okay? so. That's what that 540 means, and I'll show you how to get there with this machine. All right, so we're stepping up into the cab. This is your three-point lower. Now, the weight of the implement takes it down, or you can push it down by hand, and you can set your little slider right here. So if you have a specified height that you want your bush hog to be at up front, it'll be right there. You can lock it in, that way you don't have to look. Same thing with the up. If you don't want to lock it way up or you don't want to take it all the way up you can slide that slider okay this is the throttle if you want to turn it up and on so that's what i do whenever i'm mowing i'll set my throttle where i want it and then i'll use the hydrostatics what's really cool about the masses is that the hydrostatic the harder with your throttle all the way back the harder you push the engine matches how fast you need to go so it'll actually crank up on its own like you're driving a gas or a clutch or I'm in a clutch and you just push harder and the engine ramps up so you're not just sitting there running at high idle for no reason. Or you can choose to run at high idle for no reason. With the loader, uh, this is where the loader control is on the M. The E will be up here and your throttle will be up here on the E, okay? So that'll be that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this tractor because it's getting a little warm in here, I'm starting to sweat. You sit there, you watch that dial go all the way up we have a radio in here, so let me turn that off. And I'm gonna set this to miles per hour. We got 52.7 hours on it. Just change it first, the engine oil change. And you just crank it up. Go through the checks real quick. See how quiet this is in the cab? It's crazy. Um, you got different dials, but again, push with your, I'm a big guy, so I like it all the way forward, but you can set it and let off. Okay, uh, your PTO. Your PTO, you have a soft start button, but you put that in. What that does is whenever you're turning on your mower, it doesn't automatically just click in and engage. It gives it a soft ramp up, so it doesn't mesh the gear so hard and tears up your tractor. I use it all the time. Um, I don't personally see a reason why I wouldn't use it unless, you know, I don't know, that, that's just my personal preference because I like to be easy on my implements. And then while you're running, there you go. Three point is running. You click it once and it's gone. So again, you push in, turn. Your PTO is turning. And right over here, you'll see, so we got our PTO running at 540. So that 540 is where you want your your uh, your mowers to be, where they're designed to be ran at the right idle, is right there in between those marks. So if I'm mowing with the hydrostatic model, I'm gonna turn my idle up right there to that 540 range. But you can change your display 
to show you exactly what that PTO is turning right now. 540 RPMs, and as you start it, it might drop a little, and then you give it a little bit more fuel. And keep it right there, and it'll perform just like you were wanting, okay? That PTO is on, and I'm gonna push it, and I'm gonna turn off my blades and my mower if I was mowing. All right, so regen. So the regen light will come on, it's only happened to me once. What we're having right now is a, uh, a regeneration cycle, okay? So that light comes on in the dash. And you have little error codes that says you can change different things. But somewhere on your tractor, and the cab models is right here on the, on the uh, window. So if you read it, if it's flashing, it says clogged. If it's solid, uh, it's going through its regeneration cycle. Uh, flashing plus part means regeneration is required. Stop the tractor and reduce engine throttle. And then the solid plus part is in the process of part regeneration. And it just kind of walks it through you. On the uh, non-cab models, it's somewhere on the fender, I believe. Um, somewhere around there, but it's very simple. It only takes 10 or 15 minutes total, but you'll see that come up on the dash. And you just let your tractor run. Um, if it's not flashing, you can continue working. Like right there, it just turned off, and we were only about four minutes in, so it didn't take much. All right. Well, don't be scared about those regeneration cycles. It's pretty simple. It does it all by itself. All right. But uh, if you're in a hay barn or anything like that where it's real, real uh, fire, fire is a real possibility. Here is your. You turn that off. You park and then you just let it sit and it's about 10 12 minutes so i turn my display on mile per hour all right so our gears so if i put this thing in gear here's a little safety note and i get off off the seat it'll kill itself okay you have to put it in neutral anytime you get out of the seat you start it up okay so that's a little side note uh it's for safety obviously i want to lock four wheel drive in push down and my cool little four-wheel four -wheel drive light come on. Sometimes the pain in the butt, you just kind of mesh the gears and, until the gears get in there. I like to run on quick response and my max speed, I turn all the way up, of course, but if I want to go two mile an hour, I can find that by my dial. Then I can turn it on cruise control and set, okay? Loader, a lot of guys and girls out there don't know how to operate a loader. So you go back, it lifts up, you push forward, it goes down, so we're gonna lift it up, you push to the right, it dumps the bucket, you push to the left, it dumps the bucket. And we can give it more RPMs. We can do two functions at once. We can drop, okay? So if you're gonna do an idle demo. Okay, so if I want to, this thing radio keeps in there enough. If I want to, if I'm the back dragging, so I, I just dumped a load of dirt and then I make my bucket flat and drop it. The thing called float, that's what that little picture is right there. Push it all the way forward and it goes into float, okay? I do it normally quicker like that. And then that bucket is just sitting there floating along the ground. It's just using the weight of the loader to smooth out your ground so you go backwards and smooth out what you're doing. Or if you just wanted to float the bucket forward, but normally it's done in a backwards manner. So, and then to pull it out. So whenever you're dropping your loader, It'll, it'll obviously lift the tractor and idle, okay? Don't slam it, because then you'll drop your whole load. Just know that it's there, and it's no problem, okay? And I always keep my bucket low whenever I drive. So, all right, we are here. So again, this is the parking brake. Push in on the pedal, push down on that orange block. To release it, push off, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that, because I'm not running anything on my PTO. And this would be the remotes. So I have two remotes for the bat wing. So what I do is this would be down, this would be up, down, down, up, the way I have it plumb. And then there's also a float for this. So you snap it forward whenever you're running a bat wing, which I'll cover later, but that just makes the implement float along. There's no back pressure, it just sits there and goes. So that's your two remotes. You got windows, speakers, defrost, rear lights, front lights, windshield wipers, uh, front and rear, or vice versa, it's one of the two. And then an AC control, and a nice little net, and a little sunshade that comes out for you. 
And then we got the business end where you can pop open this window. Makes it real nice to be able to talk or see. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start driving now. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it in snail mode. Okay, I got my PTO in, in here, but I have it off. All right, we're gonna push forward. The forward pedal, backward pedal. So you go forward. Pretty simple. Anybody can drive these things. It's real simple, but we are at max speed. You see how that engine cranks up? And we are in turtle. We're going all of max speed at three mile an hour. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. I meant snarry. That was all snail mode. I'm sorry about that. This is turtle mode. This is a medium mode. Okay. Go a little bit faster. What you're looking at right there is our food plot that we planted in April. Full of clover, red clover and turnips uh, for the deer. But here we are, back to the tractor. Now I'm going around five mile an hour max speed, but if I was mowing, I would set my throttle right where I wanted with the hand throttle. And then I'll just go forward and just kind of keep it right there. And I can go as fast as I want to go within that range. Okay? So that's the how that works. If you're doing dirt work, just use it as needed. So, all right, now we're gonna go into rabbit mode. And I don't even know if I can go this fast, but it goes pretty quick. When you're driving, try to keep your loader down. Okay, it's been a little muddy here lately. We can go, what, 12, 13 mile an hour or so. So that's the, and to go backwards, same thing. We're in one wheel drive right now. And the tractor made a little rut, it's trying to go a little too fast on the mud. Oh, you see how fast that is? Now if I want to turn down my response all the way down to slow, now it's going to get going. It's going to take a little bit more, so the less experience you have, the more you want to kind of play with that. And my max speed, well max speed is different, so let's go, we're in high gear, and I'm putting it on this turtle turtle. It's in high gear, it's only allowing me to go six mile an hour, okay? If I go fast, which we'll do it in snail mode, this is all the way up. Again, we're in slow response, I like it in quick. But if I wanted to put it here, it's allowing me to go three mile an hour, now it's only allowing me, if I turned it down, 1.2, 1.3. Great for teaching little ones how to drive. But we're gonna go ahead and set it up. Then I can turn on the cruise control. Get it in. And a little light comes on. That's how you set your cruise control. The Massey Ferguson M models, they come with a nice 
rubber floor mat that comes in here that's real nice and handy keeps the heat off of you um the m's are a great great series tractor but that's it guys and there will be more follow on videos uh, how to work this machine how to hook up implements what different implements do what that we have out here in tennessee uh at the family farm and more to come from uvc power sports tractors and outdoors in alvin texas um check them out and remember if you're out of state you don't pay sales tax uh and delivery we got a great delivery company uh that normally cheaper than a sales tax price so something to think about guys um all right well y'all have a good one uh -huh.